Hi, Mike. How are you? I didn't realize it was going to start, but I just wonder, going forward now, Nazem Kadri sits in your office and says, you can trust me. How do you do that, given what's happened in the last two years? Well, obviously, I mean, this last, uh, I, I don't know how long it's been since he got suspended, but this last while for Naz has been tough. And you sit there and you watch your teammates go to battle and you know uh, you might be the tilt in the series and the depth we're counting on. And you didn't intend to cross the line. Uh, you were trying to stand up for a teammate, but it went bad on you. And uh, I think what in impacts it more is back-to-back -back years. And so it it's hard. Eddie. Eddie. Mike, as the exit interviews progressed this morning, what was the common theme? How fine a line was disappointment, optimism? Well, I mean, there's eight teams playing tonight, and we wanted to be one of them. There's 23 of us at home. Some of us more disappointed than others. I think since I've been here, this is the most disappointed our group's ever been. Uh, we felt like this was an opportunity. No, we played a good, good Boston team. We're, we're not taking anything away from Boston. But uh, there's pain in growing your group. That is just, And this is the part where you're just trying to crawl in over the edge. This is where we're at. And our guys really like each other. We got a really good group. We got the best group we've had. We had a lot of guys who had real good years and played hard for one another. And we wanted to hang around a long time. And, and you know in this business there's going to be change, so that makes it hard. We believe as a group, as a management team in Shannon and Doobie and myself, that we're right there. Now, we got to continue to build and add depth and add players. Our players believe the same thing. And so our meetings today individually, uh, the feedback from our players has been outstanding about that. that they like being here. They like our opportunity. Uh, but we got to do something. We're one of 23 teams sitting here. Mike, is there anything you wish you did individually to help influence a better result? There's always things. You know, it's, it's interesting. There's 23 coaches sitting at home today thinking they should have done something different. You know, I, I thought we really prepared. We knew we were playing. We really prepared. Uh, we started the series. They adjusted. We adjusted back. They adjusted. We adjusted back. When I look back at the series game two and game six for us, were our, our weakest games. Game six, we started so well, and then we froze there for about 30 minutes in the middle. You can look at game seven all you want, uh, but that one there, to me, was a slipped opportunity. Game seven, I thought we started really well. Uh, I thought we played pretty good until the score was 3-1, to be honest with you. Puck went in our net, didn't go in their net, but we were organized a group. As the, the toughest two games for us were two and six. Mike, I don't know if you've talked to William Nylander, but what does he have to do this summer? And can he use those first two months of the season that he missed as an excuse? Or did he just need to be better? Well, you know, I don't know how, how much you've tried excuses in your life. They're, they're a waste of time for yourself, and they're a waste of time for everyone else. And Willie's not like that. What does Willie need to do? He needs to get out of here. He needs to get back to being willy, being confident, feeling good about himself, uh, getting away in training. And when you're an athlete and, and you, you've held out like Willie did and you come back and it didn't go the way, he, Willie's a proud guy. He's a great kid and he, he has a chance to be a real good player. He wasn't a good player. And no one wears that more than Willie and he'd be honest about that. So he needs to get out of here, he needs to get home, he needs to get recharged. He needs to get training and get his game back on track and get his swagger back because no athlete who has any success is any good without having that swagger back. So it's a huge summer for Willie because uh, we need him to be a factor. Do you put him at the center spot? Or is well, you know, it all depends on your lineup, right? If Naz was available, we wouldn't have had to play Willie and we would have had more options. But Naz wasn't available the way it goes. So to me, if... Uh, uh, yeah, if he can play on the wall for us, we'd like that. Uh, what did uh, Zach Hyman uh, go through pain-wise in, in the last few games, and how tough is that? And uh, does it already make you look at next year, possibly him missing camp, and, and maybe some other players that uh, you might think might not be here? Well, uh, let's just talk about Hyman's number one is, you know, uh, when he got hurt there, I think it was three games before the end. 
you know, obviously it affected our team. Is he does the work for that line? He goes to get the puck all the time. He's the guy on that face-off circle. He couldn't put weight on his leg on the penalty kill. It affected his penalty kill. But what I like about Himes, he doesn't say nothing. He actually told us one time, I think I'm getting better. <laughs> in other words, in his heart and in his mind, he was playing hockey for the Leafs, and he was going to play hard and do everything he could. Now, uh, the other thing is about Himes, and I know there's timelines on everything, he's usually ready way before the timeline is. I wouldn't... We'll see how it goes. Mike, I'm wondering, I know the defeat's pretty recent, but what your conversation with Kyle have been like since then and what you guys need to do this offseason? Well, I mean, obviously, we've had a number of conversations. We had a good one. I think we met for a couple hours here this morning just about our plan moving ahead and what we have to do as a management team to make sure we get where we want. And uh, when you have your in meetings, you're talking to the players about getting stronger, working on the skills at doing this. You have an obligation as a management team uh, to do a lot of work yourself, to improve yourself as a coach, as a manager, but also to improve the team within the structure, salary structure, and help the guys to get where we want to go. And so that's going to be our focus. That conversation is going to go on for quite a bit here, and we'll try to get ourselves set up to improve our hockey club. Coach, uh, for you know from your coaching career, the hardest thing to do is win in the playoffs. And since you've been here in Toronto, the team has not been able to make the second round. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that sort of pressure in a summer that I know is longer than you'd hoped? Well, I think the big thing is, is two years ago when we made, made it, we probably shouldn't have made it. Yeah, we had a run and didn't expect to. Last year, we were a legitimate playoff team. This year felt like we were a real hockey club. Uh, you know, we had significant pieces leave last year in Van Riemsdyk and Bozak, who else, uh, Poli and, and uh, uh, Leo were real good penalty killers for us. Mac, those are good pieces. But we brought in Muzzin and, and Tavares, and Tavares, for me, gave us someone who could play against anyone, gave us an example, gave us an everyday pro who does it right every day, is an unbelievable teammate, a great man, and helps people get better. So... And Muzz gave us another guy that can play. Uh, we think we're going in the right direction. We still got to add depth to our lineup. Part of that is us developing more depth. Part of it is our scouts finding more people and us signing more people. But we need more. And we just keep working away at it because, the, like I said to you, there's 23 teams sitting at home, uh, eight teams. And what we've seen is the league is very tight. And there's lots of disappointment. But your job is to knock on the door, knock on the door, knock on the door, and eventually they open the door. We're in a much better situation than we've been in any year prior to this. Mike, uh, where did you see the biggest growth for Mitch Marner this season? Well, I mean, he's a guy who plays in all situations, played basically the whole year against the number one lines on the other team, has improved drastically defensively on the penalty kill. Uh, there's things Mitch still can do to get to the next level. Mitch is going to be a real leader on our club, and we need him and Austin to take a step in that area for sure. Uh, we think they're very capable of doing that. But they're also third-year players, and they're just going to get better and better, and, and the challenge is for them to do that. So the work they do off-season, so on their strength, on their shot, and the things to get better are, are very important for us. Mike, you addressed this uh, late in the season, but when there's a disappointing loss uh, like this, it comes up again. A um, lot of speculation on the outside, so can you clarify to all the people that are doing the speculating, um, what is your relationship with Kyle right now? Well, it's, re uh, it's really good. But, uh, I mean, I thank the media in our town because you guys, I say this all the time, you guys do. The reason we have the fan base and the support we do is because of you people. And the reason you have jobs is because we have this big community that loves hockey so much. And you get paid to do this stuff. How about her? But what we're going to do is, is the people that are running the hockey team, we're going to make the decisions and run the hockey club. And we're going to know what our relationship is because we have it every day. And we're not going to let anybody get in between that. So uh, Doobie's a smart guy, a good guy. I've worked with him. He was here when I got hired. Uh, I've worked with uh, him and Shani now four years here and, and have enjoyed it and continue to enjoy it. 
Uh, coach, like all hockey players, Austin said that uh, he he's up for more ice time. <laughs> and any consideration into uh, giving him more in the future? You know, I, I never really thought about. It. I don't know what, what I don't know what his minutes averaged out in the playoffs. I haven't looked at it. I think he played well on just about 20 a night in the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken. It's probably a little too much for the regular season. Uh, part of it is shift length. Uh, also depends on how many centers you have. Also depends how often you're winning. Uh, when we win, they play less. When we lose, they play more because we're chasing the game. Uh, but the biggest thing about him is, is he's really improving as a player, his 200-foot game. Uh, he's having a bigger impact. He had a much better playoff this year than he did last year, and, and he's an important piece for us. Just like we talked about Mitch, all our guys, they got to continue to grow for us to get where, where we want to go. Thanks. Thanks, thanks very much for all your coverage and the year. Enjoy the summer.